up everybody welcome back to another video in this video we're going to be doing about 55 hats so if you guys want to see the process on what it takes to do hats on a six head machine stay tuned guys saw I was only running two of the heads at this time because of the simple fact is when it comes to a six head machine you have to have thread for every single head right so um, I didn't have enough um, thread to do all six right I had enough to do two but I did order some and they just came in so um, we're gonna be using this color gray right here right I have another customer that gets a lot of hats done and they like the green um, instead of paying eight dollars a piece for the big ones I ordered the little ones from Madeira and I get these for about two dollars right so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and throw all four of these on the machine so that we're able to run all six heads at the same time and cut down our production time right because right now I'm doing two at a time we're gonna be knocking out six let's do this all right so one of the questions that I just got whenever I did the unboxing video of this or whatever it was called right um, unloading video is uh, we had a question from Lucy Lucy was asking um, why did I leave the machine away from the wall, right? Um, is it to load the thread in the back? Uh, that's one of the reasons. You know, when you have a single head, it's easy to work around it because you just step to the side and go ahead and load your, your thread, tie it up, and then just pull it to the front. Um, but I'm not the tallest person in the world, so it's a struggle, you know what I mean? So um, it was easier for me to leave it away from the wall. So whenever I needed to load the thread, it was going to be a lot easier for me to do that. And then the next reason I left it away from the wall was for this bar right here. Whenever it comes to connecting any of the brackets to the machine, uh, you could do it through the front, slide it all the way to the back, and then you're able to tighten them right here. So those are the three reasons why I left it away from the wall. One, it's a lot easier for short people like myself to load the thread. Two, whenever it comes time to tighten in the brackets, you can slide this back and tighten it. And then number three, oiling and doing your maintenance back here so it's no different from anything else that you would load whenever it comes doing to doing the thread just like the 1501 or any other other machines that you have go ahead and drop your thread on there tie your little knot once you've got your knot you are set to go so now what we have to do since we put the new thread through there we have to re-thread this right so we're just gonna where our thread was at we're just gonna pull our thread through the machine so here's my knot right here you can see this and we're going to go ahead and re-thread the machine so let me go ahead and do that with the ones that I just added and we'll be right back so the thread's good next thing we're gonna do is start hooping hats the good thing about this is it comes with two of each one so I can hoop six and then load six more and have them ready to go. So when it comes to hooping caps for the MT-1506, it's a lot different than doing it on the MT-1501. All right, so let's look at this as a single head, the MT-1501. When it comes to doing embroidery on a cap, whenever you put it on here, and you do your whole little thing and you put it in here. Um, if the cap is to the left or to the right of your presser foot that you're gonna do your trace off of, you can always use your arrows on the touchpad or the keypad to center exactly where you need it. And once you have it, you can start to embroider. The thing about the six head, all of this runs on the same frame, right? So whenever you go to adjust one cap, it's gonna adjust all of them at the same time. So, you, so when it comes to lining up these caps on the frames, you can see that little line right there, right under the six. You gotta try to center them as good as you can. And if you don't, and you do your trace, I'm gonna show you how you can fix it before you start embroidering. So let's go ahead uh, and get these lined up and get these on here, and then we'll go from there. All right, so if you look right here, we drew a red line. This red line matches with the line that's on there. 
So this is for uh, station number one. We're simply going to take it on, take our cap, put it on there like we would do a regular hat, just like any other cap that you do. And then we're going to take our band and we're going to wrap it around it. And this is where you really have to get in there and look at it and make sure that this line is centered with this line. Um, one of the things that we do is whoever starts to hoop the caps continues to hoop the hats because, because everybody's eyesights are different. So if I'm going to hoop them, then I'm going to hoop all of them so, so that I know exactly where I'm putting them and they should match up all the time. Right, so we're there, and remember, whenever you go to clamp this, as you can see, the hat starts to turn as you do it, so you got to give a little resistance. Get it in there, and if it's, and if it's off, like I'm telling you, this isn't, this isn't like the MT-1501 to where you could play with, like, whenever you put it on there, you could move, maneuver it around. Right, so that looks good, our lines here, our lines there. So we got to do this for all of them. All right, so I'm gonna do that and then we'll be right back. We got 12 hats set up, ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start putting these on here and then we're gonna do our trace and then we'll take a look at it to see how they look. So same concept when it comes to putting these on, just like the MT-1501, same concept. You're gonna take your hat, turn it to the right, left, spin it around until it falls into place. And once it falls into place, you're gonna lock it in. So with the MT-1506, like I was telling you guys before, um, this one will tra trace off any needle. So right now we're on needle number two, and if I hit the trace button, it will trace off of needle number two. So for those of us that have been using the MT-1501, before this, um, it always traces off of needle number one. So if you're not used to it tracing off of a random needle that it's on, uh, you can always go in there and change it to needle number one, and I'm going to do that. So I'm going to change the head over here, and you're going to see it shift over. So now we're on needle number one, and then we can come here, and we can do our trace again. So we're going to do our trace. And then when it's done with our trace, we can go look at every hat and make sure that it's centered. So let's go ahead and do that. So they're all off to the left a little bit, so we're just going to shift this over a little bit. And that's going to be our starting point. So now I'm going to check the rest of them and make sure they're exactly with this one. So let's look at these. All right, so when we look at needle number two, that one's good. Needle number three is good. Needle number four can move over just a little bit. Number five can move a little bit. And number six is good. All right, so when a technician was here and he was telling me if your hat is off just a little bit the way it is, it's not off a lot, very, very little, um, what we could do is loosen this up, turn it just a little bit, and then reclamp it to look at where we're going to be. So you just do this until you get it exactly where you want it. And right there, we're right back into the middle. So now we're good. We just got to do this last one right here. So this one is too far this way, so we're going to loosen it a little bit, shift it over just a tad, tighten it back up till we get it exactly where we want it to be. All right, so we're good there. We're going to do another trace. All right, so as you guys saw, this takes a little bit more patience to set it up, right, because we can't adjust individual hats like we do over here with the MT-1501. All right, so we're going to have to do about five passes with these five runs of six give us our 54 somewhere around there so instead of doing 54 individual ones on the mt-1501 five passes crazy we'll be done with this so like i tell you guys all the time once you got your trace done and with this one now you got everything centered ready to go the last thing to do is to hit start Got to make sure they're all on first right so now that they're all on we can hit start all right so as you guys saw when we started embroidering um this thing stopped like right away and the reason that was is because the thread was tangled up here so we're good now 
right? So we're going to be able to embroider. Um, the thing about this one is whenever it stops, it just stops. It doesn't, it doesn't give you a beeping noise like the MT-1501. So basically what you have to do is find a machine where the light is blinking red. So this one's blinking red. We're good to go. So what we're going to do is back this up a little bit so we can catch up to where we were at. So on this one, you don't have to go all the way back to the screen. I mean, we're right here by the screen, but if we were down there, we got buttons like this. So we can back this up a little bit by pressing it. And then we can stop it. And then when we're ready, now you see it's green and red. We can hit start. This one's going to start to stitch. And then when it catches up, the rest of them are going to kick in. So watch this. Okay, so we're on our last four caps. So we're not gonna be using um, head five and six. We're gonna take these, put them in place. So now that we got that in place, we're gonna go ahead and shut these two heads off so that these right here, the needle won't be going up and down when the other four are doing uh, its work. Since I've already checked them, we'll do another trace real quick. Just make sure everything's lined up. Then when you're ready, again, it's done. So that's it. I just want to take you guys through the process of stitching these hats right here. Artwork came out really good. Digitizing was really tight. Um, if you guys need any digitizing, make sure you guys go down below. There's a link to Aram. He's the one that does all of my digitizing for right now. And then we used the MT-1506. This thing beasted through these hats, had no problems. Um, whenever we were stitching these, we were beast mode, right? Um, and then as you guys saw, whenever we were doing this, you don't have to use all the heads, right? If you got a job where you just need four or five things you can turn off the head the way we did put that magnet over it and then you can stitch whatever you're gonna stitch so the main thing to take away from this is whenever you're hooping your hats because you got to make sure that they're all in the same area right um, again I showed you guys if it's not what you could do to adjust it just a little bit um, but remember whenever you're doing this and you go to adjust it all of them adjust at the same time not like the 1501 where, where you can move that one by itself 
So keep that in mind if you are looking to upgrade, you will have to tweak it to get these all lined up on the center seam so, so that all the hats are going to stitch exactly the same. So that's it. If you guys got any questions on the MT-1506 or the MT-1501, make sure you guys leave a comment down below. If you're looking to take your shop or your home to its next level, the MT-1501 is a good one to start with. But if you have the MT-1501 and you've outgrown it and looking to get something bigger, go down below. There's a link down there. By you clicking that link, it's going to save you up to $250. So thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for all the support. Till next time, keep pressing. Thank you.